Whiskey, Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I'm in England, the Lakes Single Malt Whiskey, the Whiskey Makers Reserve number three. Matured in the finest, meticulously sourced PX, or a P PX, Odoloso Sherry, Cream Sherry, and Red Wine Casks. Okay, very, very good. Now, first of all, I love the packaging. I love this poor, poor red, uh, purple. I love the feeling here that I'm in a church with the stained glass windows. Um, absolutely beautifully created box. So, um, you can take it out. There's a little tab here you pull, and then you get this absolutely marvelous looking bottle. Um, I'm sorry, I missed the whisk, um, the one from the lake, and I missed um, whiskey reserve number two. Now, first of all, look at this. This looks like something from a cathedral, all right? And then at the top, you have here, you have the words, um, where was it here? I need to start at the right place. Faith, hope, love, and luck. <laughs> I like that. All right, so love, faith, hope, and luck. The, the bottle cap. Hey, good cork pop. Um, you actually have like a little coin here on the top that's been pasted on there. Very, very nice here. The Lakes Distillery. Um, established 2011. That's an important date, even though um, the distillery um, really appeared on the radar of people in 2019. Two reasons, because they actually released their first one, um, not a mix of others, but actually their own whiskey, and that was the number one. And also 2019, they um, gathered 4.2 million um, pounds in order to uh, um, expand the distillery. They added eight new washbacks. That's a lot of money per wa for washbacks, a half million. I didn't think they cost that much. I knew they need to build a building and so on, so who knows. And now they actually have got written, gotten ridden of a um, bottleneck. And so they can actually distill now and ferment 24-7. Uh, excellent, excellent. Now this is England. This is not Scotland. This is not Wales. This is not Northern Ireland. This is not Ireland. This is English whiskey. Very, very important. 66 euros 90, which I think is an okay price because it's 54%. Um, this is actually bottled at cast strength. And um, these very interesting um, casts that were used, Pedro Jimenez, Oroloso, Cream Sherry, interesting. And also the red wine cask are make this a high, high quality um, bottling. I just love this bottle. Haptic. This little, um, oh, it feels so elegant. I just love that. Heavy, heavy bottle. Look at the amount of glass at the bottom here. Um, now, the environmental protectionist might not like this bottle. It's too heavy and so on. But I actually think this is a beautiful, beautiful um, example of what uh, craft distillers um, can actually do here. Fantastic. Now, a little bit of the history, just very, very briefly. We have a guy named Paul Curry, and we have Harold, the father. They helped um, start up and run Aaron Distillery. Oh, 21 years ago, 20-some years ago. And during their vacations, they'd always go back to the Lake District in um, England. I was in the Lake District about 27, 28 years ago. Beautiful, beautiful place. And, um, and they actually said, let's start our own distillery. Now, 2011 was the start, but actually they kind of tinkered around at the beginning. For the, I'm going to say for the first three, four years. And then finally, a couple of years ago, they had someone named Daval Gandhi. Um, they stole him, my words, from um, McAllen. They actually um, headhunted him and um, asked him to come to the lake, and he did. And now we have a genius of a blender that said the um, distiller character of the lakes is going to be sherry cask driven. Arr. And that's why you have Pedro Jimenez sherry cask, Oroloso sherry cask, cream sherry casks in here, plus also then the um, red wine casks um, as well. 9,700 bottles worldwide. And uh, this is just a beautiful thing. I love the tasting notes. On the nose, it says here, aromatic incense, comma, spice, chocolate, and toffee. That's it. The palate, honey, wild figs, and wood spice. That's it. And finish, I love this, long, warming, lingering. Come on.
I mean, those are the most minim minim minimalistic tasting notes I've had in a long, long time. So the nature of our art is whiskey. The inspiration of our art is nature. Lovely box, lovely bottle. Very, very well done. All right, on the nose. Now, it doesn't pop out as I expected. This is not a sherry, sherry bomb, but there's a little bit of sherry in there. Um, the word incense is an interesting word. The word spiced chocolate is great, and the word toffee also is not bad. Um, in my German video, which I can also do here in my English video, I compared it to something that I love. This is the Founder's Choice from Coswolds. Coswolds is actually in Coswolds. It's another recreational area just like the lakes in um, England. And um, this is actually a great whiskey. The only problem that we have here is it's 60.9% and this is 40, um, 54. So there's a little bit of difference in the alcohol by volume between the two of them. So just pour a little bit in here. I had a little bit left in my German video as well. <clears throat> so if I nose the two of them, I'm getting something that is somewhat similar. These are STR casks, shaved, toasted, and recharred. They were red wine, a Portugal um, red wine, and this has red wine as well in it. The sherry influence is there, but it's not that strong on the nose. On the, the palate, it's very, very evident. All right, cheers. Mm. Now, 54% is a little bit hot for me. So I have here, oh, look, alcohol. And then the sherry tries to come through, and then the alcohol goes, not yet. And the alcohol keeps on dissipating, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is good. Um, it's just a little bit too strong, too hot at the beginning for me. So what I like to do is I like to take it down to about 46% from 54. So that's actually a couple percentage points. And even the nose, it becomes a little bit more familiar, a little bit more enjoyable. Cheers. Mmm. 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 Okay. It's sweeter than I thought it was going to be. Mmm. It's actually the aftertaste with water is better than before. And what happens in the middle is there's a little bit more of a, um, it's not the alcohol anymore that's, that disturbs me, but actually it's a little bit of a wood, a little bit of a sawdust, a little bit of a tannin moment there. Um, but still, even if I go down here, it's still higher than a lot of the whiskeys I've tried in the past. A little bit of grape jelly even on there. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. The more I taste this, the more I like this, the lakes. I'm so sorry I didn't try the two. I do have a um, sample of the one someplace here. I don't know if I ever do a comparison video or actually give it out. I've um, tended to, um, to just do bottles now and at the moment um, due to the opportunity that I have to do bottle shares with these in with my WhatsApp um, bottle share groups here in Germany. All right, so um, I know from the very start that 60.9 is going to be a little bit too much for me. So let's take this down also to about 50%. Mmm. Mmm. Not as sweet. A little bit more of that woody red wine moment. Mmm, I like this. I like this more, but I like this. I'm going to give this like a B minus. Um, that's amazing. This is a very young whiskey, four or five years old, and it's a B minus. Um, beautiful bottle, beautiful presentation, beautiful um, taste with a little bit of water. Without the water, it's a little bit too much on the sharp, on the alcoholic side, but with water, uh, you can tame this down and get a bonanza, a bouquet, a whole... Um, quiver of different types of aromas and tastes and experiences here this is absolutely great value for money um someone said it's cast strength so you can basically take off 10 15 percent because of that 
Um, it's limited edition, 9,000 bottles. Take off another 10% for that. And it has very expensive um, barrels that are used. Pedro Jimenez, Ololoso, cream sherry. You don't see that very often, red wine. And so also you can take off another 15%. So you can basically half the price of the bottle and say, oh, that's a good value for money then, right? Um, because you have all these extras in here. It doesn't have the age factor, but it does have the cast strength. It does have the limited edition. It does have the great casks. And so the price is actually not bad. And I'm going to give it a C. A C for value for money, which is not bad. I love the bottle. And it's actually a B minus here on the palate and on the nose. Hmm. Good stuff. I'm going to watch this distillery. Um, in the next five to ten years, you're going to see a lot of things coming up from the lakes. And um, if I understand what um, Daval um, Gandhi wants to do, he wants to rival um, the Scottish industry. He wants to rival McAllen. He wants to rival um, the big boys up there. And we're going to see what he can do. I think he can do it. All right. Question of the day. Uh, what other Irish... What other English uh, distilleries do you know of? I have the Coswolds, I have the Lakes over there, I have the I have Bimber. What other of the almost 30 plus different distilleries out there that you've heard of um, or tasted or visited or actually experienced? Would you like to mention in the comments? Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, tell others. Be so kind and maybe share a video or two of mine on Twitter, social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are. That'd be much, much appreciated. And tell your friends, Whiskey Jason, the whiskey you might not ever see, but in a few years from now, I guarantee you, you will see lakes in Australia, in um, Eastern Europe, in Africa, in South America, as well as North America. All the best. Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.